So for the last couple of days, I've done a little light testing of Seaside on both Syncom Smalltalk and on Squeak. And this morning, I ran a couple of small tests against Ruby using a very simple Hello World type app. And I figured it'd be useful to show you the difference between developing and testing Ruby and developing and testing Smalltalk. So let's go ahead and look at what I did. I have Mongrel running here. And I installed Ruby on Rails following some instructions I found on the net as to how to do that on a Mac. And I created the simple Hello World application. There's the controller. And if you come to the browser here, you can see that this is the tutorial page I was using. So I've got that. And then if I quit out of this, you can also take a look at the view page. And there it is. It's all pretty simple. So if I go ahead and go back to that browser again, and I come in here to this localhost 3000. There it is. It loads up, sets Hello World up, and everything's fine. Now, the next thing to do is let's look at the same thing using Syncom Smalltalk. So the first thing we'll do is we'll open up a browser, and we'll create a new package. We'll call it Seaside Test. And then what we'll do is we'll create a new class in here, and we'll call it Hello World, and our super class will be seaside.wa component. We won't have any instance variables. And then there's a rendering method we need to add. Render content on. And then we just tell the HTML to put out some text. Hello world exclamation mark. Just like that. Now there's two things we need to do on the class side of this. We need to add in a testing method to tell the system that this thing can live at the top of the tree. So we'll say that's true. And then we'll add an initialization method. And we'll have this just say self register as application and the string will be hello world. There it is. Now we're not only going to write that, we're going to actually execute that. Now we'll close that down and we'll go to this menu option here and do a open browser on server. And there's our hello world right there. And sure enough it runs. All fairly simple. So far you probably haven't seen much in the way of cost benefit. Let's go ahead and do a little breakage though. What we're going to do is we're going to go back here to Ruby, and we're going to open back up the view, and we're going to do kind of a stupid little typo. We're going to take that ampersand out, because that's the thing I did the first time I ran through the tutorial. I didn't notice it was there, and I omitted it. I came in here and did this, and I got this. Okay, so I can get an application trace. I can get show session dump. It's not terribly useful information, is it? I mean, obviously you know what I did. I omitted that ampersand, and it's easy enough to fix, but I don't think this gives me a heck of a lot of information unless I stare at this and notice that's what's wrong. Let's contrast that with a more or less equivalent error over here in Smalltalkville. We'll open up back up the browser, and let's go to our little demo page. So here's our test, hello world. We'll go to render, and let's say I made a common type of typing mistake. Instead of typing T, I had my finger a little off on the keyboard, put the G. Like most programmers, I see an error message, say, yeah, I know what I'm doing. I go back to the browser, and I tell it, let's go ahead and reload that. Now notice it says message not understood here, and I get this kind of page here. Notice also there's an option called debug. Open a debugger in the IDE, move that out of the way a little bit, bring that up. You can notice here it says, I don't understand that message. More than just telling me that, though, I can debug it live. So I come down here, and once I've spotted that, I can fix it. And then I can hit this return, keep going thing, and boom, it works. That's really what the power is in Smalltalk and Seaside is, sure, Ruby is productive. Ruby on Rails is great. But once you're in the weeds debugging, you're back to printf debugging, which is so 1980s. In Smalltalk, We've had this kind of debugging capability for a long time. It takes the amp right up to 11.